Good evening everyone, uh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the online Bible study of Metanoia Christian Ministries. Kumusta po tayo ngayong gabi? Well, right now, ang aking pong, uh, I'll be sharing with you is about the cross. Kung ano ba yung cross? Ano ba yung nangyari before the cross and after the cross? Kasi maraming isip nyo ngayon, actually ngayon, alam nyo ba na we are now living in the age of grace? Kaya kung hanggang ngayon, ang ginagawa mo pa ay yung mga kaugalian at yung mga requirements at yung mga pinagagawa before the cross, alam nyo ba na nawawalan ng silbi yung cross? You make the cross of non-effect, kapag ang nangyayari po, ay pilit, nyo pa rin, pilit mo pa rin uh, ang ginagawa mo ngayon is yung dapat na ginagawa ng Old Covenant, ng Old Testament. So yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon para mas mainuhaan natin. Kasi kapag hindi natin naintindihan kung ano yung grace, uh, na, I, I remember before na turo ko na sa inyo yung grace, that the grace is not just the unmerited favor of God, but it is also... His power, His strength, and His ability in us. So, yun yung binigay niya sa atin. So, yung cross, hindi lang po ito para ma-avoid natin yung hell at hindi lang ito para makarating tayo ng heaven. Pero ito, pag tinanggap natin si Jesus, after the cross, lahat ng mga, yung abundant life, yung, uh, yung provisions, lahat yan tinanggap natin. And that is because of the cross. Kasi kung hindi dumating yun, di, ewan ko, yari tayo lahat dito. Lahat tayo namumuhay pa katulad ng Old Covenant. Amen? So, before we start, let's just pray. Almighty Father in heaven, Lord God, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful night that uh, we're together to tonight. Panginoon, maraming salamat. Lord, speak through my mind and speak through my mouth, Lord God, right now. That the, the people at the other side of this camera may be able to have a receptive heart at maunawa nila and, and that the Holy Spirit will touch them so they may be able to see the, to, the truth of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, so paano nga? Paano nga ba, ta, paano ba, paano ba natin malalaman na nawawalan ng kabuluhan yung pagkamatay ni Kristo sa krus? Kasi kapag hindi natin naiintindihan, okay, kung hindi natin naiintindihan kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa atin, we are never be able to walk in grace. Hindi tayo makakalakad dyan. Hindi natin malalakaran yung mga yan. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 1.17, let me just read this, my first verse. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Basahin ko lang sa Tagalog. Alright? Sabi nga nun, Sapagkat isinugo ako ni Kristo, hindi upang magbautismo, kundi upang mangaral ng magandang balita, at hindi sa pamamagitan ng mahusay na pagkatalumpati at karunungan ng tao, Nang sa gayon ay hindi mawalan ng kabuluhan ang pagkamatay ni Kristo sa krus. So, ibig sabihin daw po pala, pwede palang mawalan ng kabuluhan ang pagkamatay ni Kristo Jesus. Kapag ikaw ay hanggang ngayon, eh, na, 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 uh, nabubuhay ayon sa batas. Yan yung karugtong na babasahin ko. Sabi sa Galatians 2.21, sabi ganun, Hindi ko tinatanggihan ang kagandang loob ng Diyos. Ito yung grace of God. Kung ang tao'y mapapawalang sala sa pamamagitan ng kautusan, Walang kabuluhan ang pagkamatay ni Kristo. So hanggang ngayon daw pala, kung ang buhay mo, eh, ina, inilalatag mo pa, eh, nandun ka pa, naka, naka-focus dun sa commandments, naka-focus ka pa dun sa law, nawawalan daw ng silbi ang pagkamatay ni Kristo sa krus. So you make the cross of non-effect. Masahin ko sa English. Sa Galatians 2, 19-21. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, this is where I'm going at. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Alam niyo ba yung word na frustrate dito? It means to prevent us from accomplishing a purpose or fulfilling a desire. So, ibig sabihin, yung purpose ng God's grace sa buhay natin is to set us free. Alright? To deliver us from any devised schemes or, or tactics of Satan. And grant us abundant life. Yun ang purpose ng cross. Kaya ngayon, kaya yung iba, titignan mo, ba't yung mga Krisyano na hanggang ngayon, bakit ganon? That they are still living, living a defeated life. Na hanggang ngayon, parang hirap, na, hirap pa rin siyang... Hirap pa rin silang mamuhay ng victorious. It's because they are still living under the law. Na wala na sa isip nila. Kaya napakaganda rin nung turo ni Brother Eric last time about the rightly dividing the word of truth. And at the same time, uh, yung turo din ni Brother Ron about the Lord's Prayer. So somehow yan yung mga dadaanan natin tonight. 
It's just to be, uh, para lang tayo ma-remind ma ma tayo sa isa't isa at sa mga puso natin at sa mga isip natin kung saan ba tayo namumuhay ngayon. Are we still living before the cross? Or after the cross? Alright? So, basahin natin ulit. Basahin ko lang sa Amplified Version, yung 1 Corinthians 1.17. Mas, mas, uh, mas malinaw kasi dito. Sabi nga For Christ, the Messiah, sent me out not to baptize, but to evangelize by, preaching the glad tidings, which is what? The gospel. And that not with verbal eloquence, lest the cross of Christ should be deprived of force and emptied of its power and rendered vain. Listen to this. Fruitless, void of value, and of no effect. So, how do we make the cross of non-effect? Actually, pag pinagsama-sama mo itong mga verses na ito, pinanggit ko sa Galatians and then sa Corinthians, pag pinagsama-sama mo ito, well, the Bible is saying to us that it is not through the law, it is not through your performance, it is not through your own atoning for your sins, but Jesus bore it all. Binayaran ni Jesus Christ lahat. When He said it was finished, it was finished. So, anything that you add to the cross makes it of non-effect. Nakukuha, Kung baga nung nandun siya sa cross, sabi niyang ganun, it is finished. Hindi naman siya dumilat ng isang beses na ganyan, biglang sinabi, oh, down payment lang to, ha. Tapos binuka niya ulit yung isang mata niya, mag-monthly ka. O kaya sabi niyo, oh, paunang bayad to, kailangan mag-fast ka. Oh, paunang bayad to, kailangan tatlong oras ka magbasa ng Bible. Kailangan, kailangan dagdagan mo, kailangan kulang ito, may supplements dapat to, kailangan maanuhan mo. Hindi ganun. Ang sinabi niya, it is finished, then what happened? He died. And on the third day, he rose again. And he seated the right hand of the Father. Alam mo yun? Ito yung, ito yung sinasabi dito. So, pagka sinasabi ngayon dito na, if you, hanggang ngayon, ha, if you are still trusting in your own goodness, doon ka naka, nakatutok sa performance mo, sa ginagawa mo, and not on what Jesus has done, you make the cross of that effect. You are living before the cross. Amen? Kaya marami dito, diba? lagi namin din na, na napag-uusapan, madalas din sinishare namin na kapag hanggang ngayon, parang nagiging obligasyon sa atin na sinasabi, o oh, kailangan mong gawin to, kailangan hanapin mo to, kailangan gawin mo to, you have, you have to go to church, kailangan mag-church ka. Ito nga, how can you miss church if you are the church? No, kailangan, kailangan naman, ma, you have to pay your tithes, lahat, puro obligasyon, puro obligasyon, kailangan gawin mo to. At pagka hindi mo ginawa itong mga to, ito katuruan eh, pag hindi mo ngayon ginawa itong mga to, nawawala ng silbi ang pagkamatay ni Kristo. Actually, mali yun. You make the cross of non-effect if you trust in your own goodness and not on what Jesus has done. Naintindihan niyo ako, hindi ko sinasabing mali yung mga binanggit ko kanina. Depende kasi yan dun sa salaman, sa intention ng puso mo kung bakit mo ginagawa. Kaya nga lagi namin sinasabi dito, it is very important that we always ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Bakit ba kayo nakikinig dito? Bakit ba kayo nakikinig ng online Bible study namin dito? Bakit ba kayo nagbabasa ng Bible? Bakit ba kayo nag-a-attend ng church? Bakit ba kayo nagtatight? Bakit ba kayo nag-love offering? So, alamin nyo, ginagawa nyo ba yan dahil obligasyon nyo, dahil iniisip nyo na pogi points kay God? Or you are doing it because you have the right root? Amen? So, yun ang sinasabi dito. So, katulad yan, sinasabi dito that Christ sent me not to baptize. Kaya hanggang ngayon, if you are still... If you have, kung may kilala kayo na right now, sinasabi na requirement pa rin that water baptism is a requirement for you to be born again, then you make the cross of non-effect. Parang sinabi mo na kulang pa yung ginawa ni Jesus sa cross. Kailangan pala ma-water baptize yan. No, I'm not saying that water, bapt water baptism is, is bad. Water baptism is a command. Okay? It's, it's a declaration. The moment na ma-born again ka, the moment na matanggap po si Kristo, the next thing that you will look for is a water Ano mo ako, baptize mo ako. Di ba, naalala nyo yung kay, uh, kay uh, Philip uh, doon sa Yunok? Naghanap sila, baptize mo ako. Yan yung talagang lalabas sa puso mo, hahanapin mo yan to declare that the Lord Jesus, that I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. Pero kapag ipinipreach mo at ang sinasabi mo, sila, oy, kailangan magpa-baptize ka, kailangan mag-water baptize ka. Kasi kung di, baka wala, baliwala yan. E di parang sinabi mo, kulang yung ginawa ni God. Kulang yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Kulang pa pala yun, kailangan mo palang dagdagan. Eh, sinabi niya nga, kompleto yun eh. Yung cross po, mga kaibigan at mga kapatid, it is a stand-alone. Wala kang pwedeng idagdag dyan. Wala kang pwedeng ipatong dyan. Ginawa lahat ni Jesus Christ. Yung binayaran niya, binayaran niya lahat. Hindi yan down payment na kailangan may monthly installment ka. Amen? 
pati sa fasting, sinasabi, oh, kailangan mag-fast ka para maging holy ka. Kailangan gawin mo to, kailangan gawin mo yan. Ang daming pinagagawa sa'yo. Palagay mo ba? Yun ang sinasabi ko kagat lagi eh. Kailangan tignan mo, ba't ka ba nagpa-fast? I'm not saying fasting is bad. Sinabi ko nga, if, if you are fasting to deny your flesh, if you are fasting to discipline your flesh, if you are fasting to to, he, to listen to God more para mas marinig mo, so that you may be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, okay yun. Pero kung ang ginagawa mo, nagpa-fast ka para may gawin si God, na sa tingin mo, pag nagpa-fast ka, mas marinig ka niya, na sa tingin mo, pag nagpa-fast ka, eh, mauuna sa pila yung, yung request mo, then that's wrong. It's a dead work. Hindi ganun yun. Amen? We are fasting because, katulad yan, kaya, kaya ako nag-fast, like for example, sa pain. How can you command the pain to go away kung yung mismo katawan mo, eh hindi ka sinusunod? Naintindihan, for example, kaya ito, sasabihin ng katawan mo, paano ko palalayasin, paano ko makikinig sa sinasabi mong pain go away? Eh pag sinabi kong kumain ka, kumakain ka. Ano ko nyo ko? So, gawin, truan mo, truan mo yung flesh mo. Pag sinabi mo, hindi ka susunod, paano gusto mo hindi kumain? That is why we fast. We discipline it. We discipline our body. Kaya yung self-control sa food of the spirit, yan din yun eh. Yung self-control, ang pinanggalingan yan is, you know, appetite, yung sa pagkain. Alright? Ako malakas ako kumain, pero pagdating naman sa disciplining my flesh, I know how to do it. At kailan lahat tayo ginagawa natin yan. As we grow in the Lord, as we grow in the maturity of our faith, ginagawa dapat natin yan, napapractice dapat natin yan. So this is what we have to understand. Most religion today, Okay, most religion today is always adding to what Jesus has done. Halos lahat palaging, sipi mo, namatay na siya sa krus. Yung iba, nagpapakaku pa. Pinagahampas na siya, yung iba, nagpapahampas pa. Kahit, kahit, kahit ganun kalayo kang lumuhod, simula kanto, pagkabil ng kanto, lumuhod ka. Narinig na ni God yan eh. Narinig na lahat yan, binayaran niya ng lahat. Okay? Ang gagawin mo nalang tanggapin. Pero hanggang ngayon, yun ang ginagawa ng ibang tao ng mga masakit pa ngayon ito, even Christians, Christians themselves, still do this. Pa- para silang namumuhay bago yung cross. Para silang namumuhay uh, na parang hindi pa namatay si Jesus Christ. Parang hindi pa siya napako sa cross. Doon natin nawawala ng silbi. Doon nawawala ng saysay. At doon nawawala ng kabuluhan ang pagkamatay ni Kristo. We make the cross of none effect. We have to understand that Satan's only power is deception. Kaya nga pag deceived ka, hindi mo naman alam na deceived ka. Eh. Paano mo nalaman na deceived ka? It is only the truth. Pag nakita mo yung truth, yung katotohanan which is the Bible, doon lang naman maliliwanagan eh. Kaya nga stronghold, di ba? Sa stronghold, it is only through the truth na makikita mo, "Oh, teka muna. Satan has deceived me." That is the only reason. So yung mga religion, yan ang ginagawa ngayon. Kaya nga magkikita mo sila habang ginagawa nila yung isang bagay, di ba si Saul bago naman naging Paul, ganoon naman siya, eh. sincere naman siya sa ginagawa niya. And he thought that he was serving God that he was serving the Almighty. But he was sincerely wrong. Mali. Hanggang sa'yo, nagpakita si Jesus sa kanya na sinabi niya, why are you persecuting me? So, ganun din ang nangyayari ngayon sa atin. Kaya yun ang sabi sa 2 Corinthians 4.4. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They are blinded. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ who is the exact likeness of God. So, yung re- the, the only reason that Satan tries to hinder the preaching of the gospel, kasi nga, hindi, kung hindi niya kaya, alam niyo kung anong ginagawa ng Satan, kung hindi niya kaya pigilan, ang gagawin niya, ipapervert niya. Guguluhin niya. So that you may be confused. Pag na-confuse ka ngayon, maguguluhan ka. So, steady ka na doon. It's either hanapin mo talaga yung katotohanan, o doon ka na lang. Sabay ka na lang sa agos. Yun ang ginagawa ni Satan, kaya nagtatagumpay siya. Amen? It is always the word of God that produces salvation. Wala nang iba. Hindi yung mga programs at hindi yung kung ano mang social gatherings na gagawin nyo, any religious activity. Ito, tandaan nyo. Any religious activity, kahit ano pang activity yan, but does not have Christ as the focal center of man's redemption, it's a dead word. Bali, wala lahat yan. So, kailan nakafocus tayo sa truth of the word? Let's go to Galatians 5.4. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. So, sinasabi, kung ngayon, iniisip mo na nakaka one point ka, nakaka two points ka, na perfect mo yung law, sa tingin mo, kaya may perfect yung law. There are 613 laws. May mga categories pa yan. Baka mas parami pa dyan. Laglag ka sa grace. 
Kasi iniisip mo, na-justify mo, nagiging righteous ka doon sa sarili mong kagagawan, doon sa sarili mong uh, kaparaanan. Na wrong. Dapat doon tayo sa natapos na ni Jesus Christ. Christ is made of none effect. Pag ganyan ang ginagawa mo. Tanda natin, Jesus is the greatest display of God's power. Cross, the cross is actually the perfect manifestation of God's love. So kung hindi mo naiintindihan kung anong tinanggap natin dyan, at nakafocus ka pa rin dun sa ginagawa mo at sa kaya mong gawin, kaya nga, para sa akin, para sa akin, ang, ang, ang greatest sin is self-righteousness. Kasi mas nakapili ka na, mas, mas tinibigyan mo ng halaga yung kaya mong gawin kaysa dun sa ginawa, ng, kaysa yung, sa ginawa ni Jesus. Nakuha niyo ako? Unbelief yun eh. Mas naniwala ka na dun sa kaya mong gawin. Nawala na lahat yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Lagi ko na sinabi dito, even in my last preaching, kaya iba pa rin, pag nagtuturo ka sa mga, alam mo yung talagang gulo yung buhay, yung nasa presinto ka, nag, kasi talagang tinatanggap nila yung word of God as it is. Na walang inhibitions, wala na silang mga stronghold pang dadaanan. Kasi pag meron, ang daming reklamo, ang daming ganito, debate, ganyan, talo, doktrina, kung ano-ano pa. Ah, well, well, ang kailangan naman natin makita is yung truth na binayaran ni Jesus Christ lahat at wala kang pwedeng idagdag doon. Ang idadagdag mo lang doon, i-appropriate mo lang by faith. Amen? Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18, yung sunod. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Preaching of the cross is all about Jesus dying for our sins. He paid it all and we can add to it. All you can do is to have faith in Him. Kaya nga sabi ko, faith is man's responsibility. O tingnan mo na, pastor, sinasabi mo na naman, responsibilidad na naman yan, obligasyon na naman yan. Alam nyo, yung responsibility na sinasabi ko rito, faith is man's responsibility. Your responsibility is simply responding in His ability. Re-respond, paano ka mag-respond? Faith. Hindi sa sarili mong gawa, you respond in His ability. Yung ginawa niya na, yung natapos niya, yung, yung, uh, yung na-accomplish niya, you just respond to it by faith. Yun lang ang gagawin natin. Eh hanggang ngayon, ang dami pa rin, kailan may gawa, kailan may gawa, kailan gawin mo to, kailan gawin mo yan. Kaya nababurden, kaya nakokondem, kaya napapagod, kaya umaatras, hanggang it, sa bandang huli, nire-reject na. Hanggang huli, okay na siya lang ganyan. Kasi the more na napapagod sila, the more na nababurden sila, parang pakiramdam nila, ginigilty pa sila ni Lord. Which is wrong. The Holy Spirit is always for edifying. The Holy Spirit is always for building up. Hindi para makondem ka. At hindi para ma-feel guilty ka. Amen? Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. When you're talking about the cross, it is not the power, it is not of your own power, ah, that, 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 that has enabled you to live your old life. Hindi yung sarili mong kakayanan na nagawa mong iwanan yung dati mong buhay. It is always the power of God that leads us to salvation. Yung power, yung word, na kapag naintindihan natin, naunawaan natin kung ano yung katotohanan. Kasi ito yan eh. Kasi kung kaya ko palang, ako na lang, sa example, sa sarili kong buhay, kung kaya ko palang magbago noon pa, sa sarili kong kaparaanan, di sana noon pa nagbago na ako. Ever since I was 15 years old, hindi ko na alam po anong ginagawa ko. Ever since that, yun yung edad ko, marami na akong ginagawang hindi tama. And in the course of my life, marami akong nasaktan, marami akong nasirang pamilya, marami akong nasirang, marami akong nagawa na I'm not really proud of. Gustong gusto ko nang tapusin yung buhay ko, ayoko na nang ganong buhay, gusto ko magbago. Pero hindi ko magawa. Hirap na hirap ako. Only then, until then, nung natanggap ko si Jesus Christ, naintindihan ko, that my sins was for, na, na, napatawad ang mga kasalanan ko at binigyan niya ako ng bagong buhay, only then na natalikuran ko. So, it is the power of God. You can't do it on your own. Amen? It is through Jesus that our sins are forgiven. It is through Jesus that our sins was atoned. Because we can't pay for our sins. Alright? Hindi natin kayang bayaran yan. Ito yan, para tayong may utang na hirap na hirap kang bayaran. Dumating si Jesus, binayaran yan, doble pa. Yan ang ginawa niya. So, dapat yung buhay sa atin yan. Para mas maliwan na. Kasi importante nakikita natin kung ano yung ginawa niya. Kung ano yung nagawa niya. Merong uh, verse, uh, not sure if Isaiah 50 or Isaiah 51, may binanggit yung, uh, yung from where rock you were. And then, uh, kung papakita yung pit na, uh, from a pit that you were dug out. Nabasa ko yun eh. Parang kailangan, para maging totoo sa yung righteousness ng Panginoon, kailangan makita mo kung saan ka ba niya pinulot. 
at kung sino ka na in Christ. Amen? If we add anything to Jesus, to the cross, we defile it. Kahit nakabutihan pa yan, kahit na goodness mo pa yan, anything you add pollutes what Jesus did. Yun na sinabi dito ni Paul, Philippians 3.8. You doubtless and I, you, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered that the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So, sinasabi ni Paul dito lahat ng mga tinapos siya, lahat, sino mo nag-training kay Paul, si Gamaliel pa, lahat ng mga pinagalaan sa, he counted all as dung. Yun ang sinasabi niya, that I may win Christ. Eh, marami kasi sa atin dito, kaya masyadong self-righteous na, Meron nga, fine, kulang na lang i-frame yung ano eh, fine-frame yung mga ang mga righteousness din nandito naka-frame eh. Okay, natapos ko to. Nata- you know, hindi dapat ganoon eh. Wala tayong kayang gawin dito. Ang gagawin mo lang maniwala kay Jesus Christ. So yan ang isa-isahin ko, right? So ngayon dinefine ko lang kung ano yung cross, paano ba nawawala ng effect yung cross. Actually there's there's a uh, story of a pastor and a kid may may story yung isang pastor na yung anak niya nag uh, Nag, uh, nagpapaalam na lumabas para manonood siya ng movie. Sama yung movie is PG-13. So sabi niya gano'n sa tatay niya na pastor, uh, Daddy, uh, manonood kaming sine. Pero PG-13 eh. Siguro may konting violence, may konting sex or ganyan. Pero hindi naman namin masyado ano, hindi naman siguro makaka... Eh, parang wala naman siguro, hindi naman gano'ng katindi. So nag-isip yung pastor, sabi niya, uh, alam mo kahit ano pa yan, de, ganito na lang, huwag na kayong tumuloy, mag-sleepover na lang kayo sa bahay, pagluluto ko na lang kayo. So, bumahig yung mga bata. Doon sila natulog. Doon sila nag-step over. And then, yung pastor, nag- naghain. Just, parang, parang meron siyang ma-improve na point. Ano? So, naghain, nag-bake ng cookies. And then, ang ginawa sa, sa cookies na yun, naglagay siya ng konting maliit lang na goat dung. Alam niyo naman kung gano'ng kalit, kalit yung ano. Parang sinasabi ko dito, he counted it as dung. So, naglagay siya ng maliit lang. Parang raisins lang yun eh. Sinama niya doon sa cookies. Pero bago niya, bago niya hinain, sinabi niya, Teka lang, gusto ko lang muna sabihin sa inyo. Bago yung kainin niya, may nilagay ako maliit na maliit lang na goat dung. Kakainin mo ba yun? Hindi na, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, kahit ganong kaliit pa ilagay mo at idagdag mo sa cross, it makes it of none effect. So, kahit ganong kaliit pa yung nilagay nila doon, hindi mo na makakain yun. Hindi mo na mapapakinabangan yun. Nakuha niyo ako? Nakuha niyo yung, yung dugtong doon? We have to understand, wala tayong ibang pwedeng idagdag sa cross. And religion has taught us sobra na hanggang ngayon that we have to earn to receive the healing that we have to do this para mapagaling that we have to do that para para maintindihan that kailangan nating gawin to para ma-receive yung blessings that is before the cross my friends hindi na hindi na ganun hindi na hindi na ganun ang ang dapat nating ginagawa ngayon kaya nga sakto ito doon sa teaching ni brother Eric yung uh, right dividing the word of truth yun ang dadaanan natin ngayon let me just go there uh, ito yung importante na dapat alam natin para nalalaman natin kung saan tayo lumalakad. Para nalalaman natin, teka muna, nasan ba ako? Nasa before the cross ba ako o after the cross? So ito para ma-remind tayo. Sabi sa 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me read it in the Amplified Version. Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. So, ibig sabihin, kung sinabanggit dito that there is a right way to divide, din malamang there is a wrong way to divide. Yan kasi ang hirap, if you just pick verses in the Bible and then preach it, pwede kang makagawa ng turo eh. For example, oh, humugot ko nang biglang sinabi dito, uh, and, 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 Ju- and Judas hanged himself. Pwede kang humu- do it likewise. Pwede mong gawin yun eh. Kung ang gagawin mo, humugot lang na humugot sa Bible, Bible pa din yun. Pero dapat, you know how to rightly divide it and wrongly divide it. Kasi kapag mali ang pagkakaayos mo niya, mali ang pagkakakuha mo niya, at pagkakaintindi niyo, Walang mangyayari. False teaching yun. Kaya nga palagi namin dito, kahit naka, we are picking verses, pero always andun lagi yung aming context. Napaka-importante yung context lagi tayo. Amen? Let me just, see, uh, let me just read this. 
Ito yung before the cross. Para mas, ma, para mas ma, ma-revive naman tayo, mas stir up yung mga hearts natin, matandaan lang natin kung saan tayo pinulot at kung nasan tayo ngayon. Makikita natin. Requirement of the blessing. Itong requirement of the blessing before the cross. Let me just read. Deuteronomy 28, 1-15. I'll just read through this. Medyo mahaba. Just para mas maano natin. Tingnan nyo ha. Unang, unang word pa lang. If you, kung ikaw, ikaw muna. Ito. Before the cross, sabi niya if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all His commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you, and na naman, if you, kung ikaw muna, kailan ikaw muna, kailan sumunod ka muna, alright? Heed the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your beast, the increase of your cattle, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading throw. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall be you be when you go out. Sipi mo, bless na bless. Pero kailangan gawin mo muna, ha? If you heed to the voice of the Lord your God. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse in all that you undertake, and He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as the people holy to Himself, as He has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in His ways. Ayun na naman yung if you. Alright? And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open to you His good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations. Hindi ka na nauutang. Okay? Hindi ka na nauutang. Ikaw yung magpapautang. All right? And then it says here, And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall uh, be above only, and you shall not be beneath. If you heed the commandment, ayun na naman yung if you. If you. So palagi dito, ikaw muna. Ikaw muna, gawa mo muna. Ikaw muna ang gagawa. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and are watchful to do them. And you shall not turn outside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, or to go after other gods to serve them. But if you, ayun na naman yung if you, will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all His commandments and His statutes, statutes which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you. So, ibig sabihin, pati ito, pag hindi mo na fulfill lahat ito, pag hindi mo na sunod lahat ng commandments, lahat ng curses, kasayo. Pero, pag, nas, pag nasunod mo naman lahat, all those laws, kasayo ito. So, ito yung requirement before the blessings. Obedience. Obedience. So, kailang obey ka. Kailang obey ka. Okay? Ano ba requirement after the cross? Para makita lang natin, ano ba requirement after the cross? Kasi before the cross, kailan sumurod ka? Obedience. Okay? Relax na muna kayo. Kasi baka mamaya sa mga religious spines dyan, sinasabi na ako, parang sinasabi mo, hindi na mag-obey. Relax na muna. Pero tignan muna natin kung ano yung sinasabi after the cross. After the cross, Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So, ibig sabihin yung curses, we have been redeemed from that after the cross. Wala na, naridim tayo doon, mga generation, lahat. Wala na, I have been delivered. We have been delivered. Say it right now, I have been delivered. In Jesus' name. Ito requirement after the cross. And then in 14, itong pinaka the best dito. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, which is us, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, ibig sabihin, sino requirement? Believe. Believe Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus Christ. Yun ang requirement kasi siya yung, naka, siya yung naka-fulfill ng law. Before the cross, let me just repeat, before the cross, ikaw muna. After the cross, ulit natin, before the cross, it's what you do first, and then God will do something. Then God will do this, God will bless you. After the cross, it's what Jesus has done, and then tanggapin mo na lang. Amen? Hindi ka nakikilos. You will just have faith with what Jesus has done. Tatanggapin mo na lang. It's no longer what you do first. It's about Jesus has done that enables us to be blessed. Amen? Kaya marami sa atin, uh, I want to read through this, Galatians 3, 1-5 in the message translation. Kasi dito si Paul, nung 
Naturuan niya na eh. Na-preach niya na yung katotohanan ng salita sa Galatians. But then, nabigyan lang ng mga false teaching. May mga pumasok na Judaizers. Medyo naguluhan na naman sila. Kaya ito yung sinasabi ni Paul. Palitan ko na lang yung Galatians. Yung crazy, yung Galatians, Christians na to eh. Maraming Christians na up, up to now ganito. You crazy Christians, did someone put a hex on you? Have you taken leave of your senses? Something crazy has happened. For it's obvious that you no longer have the crucified Jesus in clear focus in your lives. His sacrifice on the cross was certainly set before you clearly enough. So sinasabi ito, pinaliwanag ko na kung anong binayari ni Kristo. Binayari ni Jesus Christ so that we may have an abundant life. Anong nangyayari sa inyo? Yan ang sabi niya rito, let me put this question to you. How did your new life begin? Paano ba nagsimula yung bagong buhay mo? Paano ba nagsimula yung, yung pagiging born again mo? Nung naging Christian ka? Sabi niya, was it by working your heads off to please God? Nagpagod ka ba? Bago mo tinanggap si Kristo? O naniwala ka lang? Are you going to continue this craziness? Or was it by responding to God's message to you? Are you going to continue this craziness where only crazy people would think they could complete by their own efforts what was begun by God? Ito na naman tayo, self-effort. Yung sariling gawa. Alright? If you weren't smart enough or strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you could perfect it? Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing? It's not yet a total loss. Sabi nga, hindi pa huli ang lahat, sabi ni Paul. But it certainly will be if you keep this up. Guys, if you still have, nakikita nyo na parang andyan pa rin kayo, you're still living before the cross. Guys, this is an eye-opener for you. This is a heart-opener for you. And I know that the Holy Spirit is touching you right now that you may be able to see the truth of the Word that we are now living in the age of grace. Amen? So sa amin ganun, answer this question. Does the God who lavishly provides you with His own presence, His Holy Spirit, working things in your lives you could never do for yourselves, does He do these things because of your strenuous moral striving or because you trust Him to do them in you? Don't these things happen among you just as they happened with Abraham? Ano bang ginawa ni Abraham? He just believed. He believed God, and the act of belief was turned into a life that was right with God. Guys, after the cross, it says faith. We just believe. So now, sinasabi ba, obedience are, not, are no longer important? Baka sinasabi niya, oh, pastor, okay na pala, eh. huwag na pala mag-obey. Eh. Hindi ganun yun. Obedience still has its place. Andiyan pa rin yung obedience. But it's no longer a requirement. Hindi na requirement yung obedience. Okay, after the cross, Jesus and your faith in Him is the requirement. Ang requirement, si Jesus. That was after the cross. Kasi sa Old Covenant, wala naman talaga makasunod ng mga batas eh. Sa sobrang dami niya, hindi mo masusunod yan. We always fall short. It is always impossible for us to attain all those blessings. Kaya nga, it's the same reason that Jesus came as the perfect Lamb of God for us. So, ang gagawin natin, tatanggapin na lang natin. So ngayon, we are blessed. Okay? We, are, we are blessed not because of our own obedience. We are blessed because of Jesus' obedience. We, are, we, uh, we do not obey to get blessed. We are blessed. It is why we obey. Nakuha niyo ko? Yung obedience is a fruit. Hindi na siya requirement. Yung obedience, kusa na lang nalalabas sa iyan if you have the right root, which is Jesus Christ. Nakukuha ba? Kasi before, kailangan mo muna maging mabait, kailangan mo nang gawin to, kailangan mo nang gawin yan, kailangan, requirement. Pero ngayon, si Jesus ang requirement. Kaya nga, di ba, sa confess, eh, marinig, makikita mo naman sa Bible, the only time na may salit ng confess, you confess your, your sins to, to your fellow brothers. Pero yung confess, meron kayo ko-confess, you just confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That is what we confess. We confess that He is King. Amen? Kaya sabi sa Romans 5.19, for as by one man's disobedience, sino ba to? Si Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall, shall many be made righteous. We have been made righteous through Jesus Christ. Ito yun, ha? So if Jesus truly is on the inside of you, alright? Kung si Jesus nandyan ngayon sa loob mo, alright? Obedience will be the fruit of your new nature. It is the byproduct of Jesus. Kaya yung sinasabi namin, di ba, yung fruit-bearing tree, may nakita ka na ba na puno? Nahirap na hirap na mang makita kang puno ng nyog eh. Halos kumurbada na kasi namumunga. Wala naman eh. Wala naman na milipit para mamunga eh. Automatic yun. Kasi kung puno siya ng nyog, nyog ang lalabas. 
Pero automatic na lalabas yan. Maganda pagkakalabas niya. From, talagang mamumunga yan. So yung obedience, it will be a byproduct of Jesus Christ. Kung Jesus Christ nasa loob mo, automatic po na lalabas is Jesus. Nakukuha niyo ako? Sa fruit of the Spirit, napag-usapan din natin yan, kapag nakakabit ka sa true vine, magmamanifest, magmamanifest yung fruit. Fruit of joy, fruit of love, fruit of peace, fruit of, uh, fruit of uh, patience, lahat yan lalabas yan. Kapag tama at kung saan ka nakakabit. So ang sinasabi natin dito, pinag-uusapan natin, obedience, obedience is now the byproduct of Jesus. Lumalabas na yan. Kasi tinanggap natin siya. It is no longer a requirement. Requirement siya before the cross. But after the cross, ang requirement si Jesus lang. Alright? So, I'm a new creation. Let's just say, I'm a new creation, I obey. Yan ang sinabi ko kanina. Diba? We do not obey to get blessed. We are blessed. It is why we obey. It is not what we do first before God. Okay? Ang gagawin na, kasi pagka ang ginagawa mo pa hanggang ngayon, eh may ginagawa ka muna para may gawin si God. Then you are living before the cross. Pero ang ginagawa mo ngayon, pag ginagawa mo to dahil tinanggap mo si God, dahil naramdaman mo ang love niya, dahil tinanggap mo, na, nag-manifest sa'yo, nabuo sa'yo, namuhay sa'yo, naging totoo sa'yo ang pagmamahal ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. Then, at saka mo ginagawa yung mga mabubuting bagay, yung mga, yung mga pag-serve mo and everything, then you're living after the cross. Amen? So, paano ba? Paano ba tayo nagiging righteous? At tas tayo konti, konti Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So mga kapatid, righteousness is a gift. Paano ba tinatanggap yung gift? Na siyempre. Tatanggapin mo, kukunin mo. Kasi kahit regalo sa iya, kung ayaw mong kunin, hindi mo makukuha yan. You have to receive it. So the day that you, the, the day you believe you have the righteousness of God in you, then you will start at mag, umpisa mag-manifest. You will start giving birth to the righteous fruit. Kapag namuhay sa iyo, pag tinanggap mo yung righteousness of God. Kaya sinasabi ko kanina rito, kasi baka mamaya may mga, yung mga religious minds yan, sasabihin ako, sinabi ng pastor, wala na, huwag na raw tayo mag-obey. Obedience is now the fruit it is no longer the requirement after the cross. So yung obedience, lumalabas na lang yan because we have the right root, which is Jesus Christ. Kaya nga yung iba, hirap na hirap. Gusto kong buma, eh, pero di kumagawa. Di ba yung ganyan? Kaya hirap na hirap sila eh. Kasi hindi nila nakuha. Hindi nila natanggap. Yung totoong pagmamahal ni Kristo, hindi nila natanggap yung righteousness. Naintindihan? Kaya nga tinyo sa Matthew 6.33. Ano sabi sa Matthew 6.33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Kasi kung hindi mo na-seek at hindi mo tinanggap, hindi mo binuway sa iyo yung righteousness ni God na para mapunta sa iyo. How are you going to receive all these things to be added to you? Kaya hirap na hirap ka eh. Kaya pagod na pagod ka. Kasi parang iniisip mo, ang mindset pa rin ng tao, sinner pa rin ako. Ang mindset ng tao na, hindi eh. Hindi ko kaya eh. Hindi pwede yun. Parang mahirap yun. Kasi kanina lang may nagawa ko eh. Kaya nga di ba sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.21, He who know no sin became sin for us. Kasi kung yun kaya mong paniwala, ito na lang, kung kaya mong paniwalaan, na yung si Jesus Christ, walang kasalanan, naging kasalanan. Mahirap bang paniwalaan na yung makasalanan, maging walang kasalanan? Kasi tinanggap mo nga eh. Tinanggap mo yung si Jesus na walang kasalanan, naging kasalanan siya para sa'yo. Nang sa ganun, matanggap mo lahat. Yung righteousness, we've been sanctified, the blessings. Para dyan yung cross. Amen? We go to 1 Corinthians 1, tuloy tayo sa 30 to 31. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, ganda nito, wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. If we are to boast, we boast in the Lord kung anong ginawa niya para sa atin. Pero kailangan, wait, tanggap na, tanggapin natin that Jesus is inside of us, tinanggap natin. The new birth doesn't just produce a changed life, mga kapatid. Parang exchange life yan eh. Nawala na yung luma. Okay? That is to say that the Lord, actually, ang Panginoon, hindi naman, hindi naman yung, bas, pinag, hindi naman yung flesh natin, it's not the flesh na binagawa ng wise, righteous, sanctified, or redeemed. Instead, He Himself becomes our wisdom. He Himself becomes our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Kailangan na mabuhay sa yan. At kailangan paniwalaan mo. Kasi up to the extent na kaya mong paniwalaan yan, doon lang magmamanifest yan. Kasi kung medyo duda ka, 
Kapatid, pagdudahan mo yung duda. Amen? Now, let's go to prayer. Ando tayo sa blessings kanina. Hindi ko na iisa-isa yung prayers na to. Dadaanan ko lang kasi Brother Ron has already taught about this, the Lord's Prayer, na ipaliwanag niya ng maigay dispensation. Kaya dapat i-remind ko lang sa inyo na dapat alam natin ito. Let's just read. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 6. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So dito binanggit yung different kinds of prayer. Actually, we have six different kinds of prayer. Yun yung prayer of intercession, prayer of praise, uh, prayer of agreement, uh, repentance, and edification, yung tongues. Hindi ko naiisa-isain yan. I'm just gonna go intercession. Kasi marami nagtatanong, paano yun? Kasi nga, okay pa ba yung intercession? Ito, yung intercession is still okay. Biblical naman ang intercession, pero paano ka ba nag intercede how do you intercede? Are you interceding like the way Moses and Abraham did back in the Old Covenant? Or are you enforcing the Word? Kasi ang prayer po natin ngayon, if you are living after the cross, ang prayer natin, eh, hindi na pleading with God. Kaya nga kanina, sinabi ko rito sa uh, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Si Jesus Christ na ang mediator natin. Before the cross kasi, appropriate pa kila Moses yan, kila Abraham para magmakaawa sa Panginoon. Oh, wag nyo na nilang saktan. Oh, spare them. Appropriate pa sa kanila. Wala pang magmamakaawa eh. Wala, wala pa si Jesus Christ eh. Kaya ganun sila. Hindi, sige na, paano kung may lima? Paano kung may sampung righteous? Di ba may ganun, tinanong si, si Moses. Pero paano? Anong, anong ginawa? Kaya ginagawa nila yun dahil wala pa nga. Wala pang magpiplead. Okay sa kanila yun. Pero, after the cross, sino ba mediator? Binasa ko kanina. 1 Timothy 2.5 Jesus is the one and only mediator. Walang iba magpiplead sa'yo. Kaya nga tinatapos natin every prayer in Jesus' name eh. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng sinabi mo, i-enforce mo na lang. So if you are trying to intercede the way Moses did, kung ginagawa mo ngayon, nag-intercede ka, katulad nila Moses, nila Abraham, alam mo ginagawa mo? You are taking, you are taking Jesus' place. Parang sinasabi mo, hindi. Ako si Jesus. Kasi ikaw na yung nagmamakawa eh. Eh tapos na eh. Ginawa niya na nga lahat eh. It was all been provided for. Bayad na. Kompleto na. Kanina, kanina pa lang, nung unang, unang, sinabi ko pa lang dito kanina, that, sinabi niya, it is finished. It is finished. Hindi na siya, hindi na siya dumilat. May nakita pa kayong dumilat? Na sinabi ba nun? Oh, he winked. Sinabi, mag-down payment ka, tapos may monthly ka. Wala naman ganun eh. Sinabi niya, it is finished. This is how we pray. Hindi na tayo nagmamakaawa kasi pag sinabi mo yun, parang sinabi mo mas mahal mo na yun kaysa kay God. Si kung, kung sino mas nagmamahal sa mga tao, wala na mas titindi pa sa wala na mas titindi pa sa pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Isipin mo, ha, kung ang Panginoon nag-iisip, palagi mo ba bibigay mo yung anak mo para sa isang makasalanan? Hindi, di ba? Pero binigay niya yun kasi ganun kanyang kamahal. Ganun buong-buo ang pagmamahal niya sa iyo, gusto kanya ma-save. Kaya binigay niya sa ilin niyang anak. So wag mo nang nakawin pa, wag mo nang wag, wag ka nang mag uh, mag-intend pa. Napalitan yung place ni Jesus. Ginawa niya na yan. Tatanggapin mo na lang. That is how we pray. So pagdating sa healing, ang gagawin mo lang, enforce mo lang yung word. Isaiah 53.5, 1 Peter 2.24, by His stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tatanggapin mo lang yun. Pagdating sa provision, I know, well, thank you. It's, it's always a praying from, from a place of victory. Not for victory. Hindi ka na nagpe-pray, Lord, please, kailangan kong ganito. Lord, kailangan kong gumaling. Lord, pagalingin mo ako, hindi na ganun. Lord, thank you for my healing. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for the provision. Thank you for the opportunity. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. That is how we pray. We enforce the word. Ngayon, kung hindi mo alam yung word, yun ang problema. Kaya kailangan alam natin. Because faith comes by healing and healing by the word of God. Kung hindi mo palagi narinig yan, ang huling narinig mo, eh, nung four years ago, tapos nag-stick ka na dun, well, That'll be your problem. Mayroon ko nang pahaba yung pagdating siya. Pero, <laughs> kailangan natin patuloy tayong hahanapin. Kasi kung talagang mahal, if you are in love with the truth, hindi lulubay sa iyan eh. Hindi mo lulubayan yung bagay na yan. Parang asawa yan eh. May, may gusto mo nakikita. Kasi mahal mo. Di ba? Ganun yung Biblia. Mahal mo eh. May, may gusto mo kausap. Amen? Ang naalala ko, uh, a friend of ours, nagpunta kami sa wake service na, 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 banggit, na banggit niya na there was, yung daddy niya kasi uh, passed away. And then there was no time na talagang lagi nagbi-video call yung tatay niya sa kanila. Ganun silang kamahal. So, doon mo makikita kung talagang mahal mo yung tao, mayat-maya, di ba hinahanap mo? 
So, ganun dapat yung pagmamahal natin sa word. Kasi kung hindi ganyan, mga kapatid, eh, kailan natin search our hearts? Hanapin natin sa puso natin. Bakit ba natin ginagawa itong mga bagay na to? Kasi kung buo na sa inyo yung tinanggap natin kay Jesus Christ, buo na sa atin at buhay na buhay na everything has been provided for, life would be so... Ha! Huh, sarap uminga. Ang sarap mabuhay, ika nga. Amen? So now, uh, balik tayo sa intercession. Okay, 2 Corinthians 11, 1, 11. While you also cooperate by your prayers for us, helping and laboring together with us, thus the lips of many persons turned toward God will eventually give thanks on our behalf for the grace, the blessing of deliverance granted to us, the request of the many who have prayed. So dito nang galing yung intercession kasi. After the cross, ang intercession is all about enforcing what Jesus has already done. Kailangan ganyan. Hindi na tayo nag intercede Wow, parami yan tayo. Tapos, Lord, parang awan na. <laughs> Hindi na ganun. I'm sorry for the religious minds, but it is not like that. Kasi ang ginagawa nyo, pinapalitan nyo yung ginawa ni Jesus. Tatanggapin na lang dapat natin eh. Okay, nakukuha ba? Kasi kung hindi mo nakikita to, well, Satan has blinded you. Go to the truth of the word. Makikita yan, ipapakita sa'yo. Pag hinahanap mo. So ngayon, pakinggan mo ng maigi to. Ayun, natawa ko. May meron, uh, uh, Andrew Womack has a testimony about this eh. Uh, meron daw silang in-intercede. Kaya dito mo makikita may powerful ng intercession naman eh. They were interceding for a guy na addict. Sabi nga nun, uh, uh, we, uh, we speak life, we we speak uh, we speak uh, we speak happiness upon this person pero addict siya so somehow may problema yata dun sa the kind of prayer na ginagawa nila kasi every time natatanungin nila yung addict tatanungin ni Andrew sabi niya oh kumusta ka okay life is good so nagtataka si Andrew sabi niya ganun paano 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 ano paano pat ganito to tigilan na nga natin magpray sabi niya ganun tigilan na natin magpray to wag na natin intercede alam niyo hindi nila inintercede the next day lumapit yung addict Ano ginawa niyo sa akin? Bigla, bigla na siya nag-repent. Tulungan niyo ako, sabi ganon. So, ibig sabihin, may, may bearing yun. Yun nga lang, doon pumasok yung sinabi ni, ni ginamit nila yung 1 Corinthians 5.5 doon. Kaya minsan, kailangan we have to discern, na magkantayin na discernment, when to do this. Ang sabi dito sa 1 Corinthians 5.5, Then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the day of the Lord returns. This may sound harsh. Pero minsan, kailangan kasing magising. And the only way na magigising ang tao minsan is you, you know, just give him. Para ma- ma- mapagod siya sa kakalakad sa flesh. Pag napagod siya, talaga lalapit at lalapit siya. Walang may kaya niyan. Depende na lang kung talagang tinanggap mo ng gusto. Pero I believe that the Lord can still do something for this. Amen? So there are two kinds of Christian. One who prays and confesses, and the one who just wait on God to do something. So which one is you? Sino ka dito? Ephesians 1, 15 to 20. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Brothers and sisters, if we don't have a revelation, Lord, ng, 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 ni Jesus Christ, ng goodness niya, ng lahat ng binayaran niya, may hirapan talaga tayo. Kaya pinag-usapan dito, wisdom and re- revelation of what Jesus has already done. Just imagine Christians, lahat kayo, mga nanonood ngayon, having this knowledge of Him, of what Jesus has already done, of what Jesus has paid for on the cross, you will never walk in fear, you will never walk in doubt, you will never walk in pressure. Kasi alam mo, you are taken care of. Naintindihan nyo? It's already done. I, I remember yung, when I prayed for a family friend of ours, uh, two years back, uh, he was diagnosed with a uh, pneumothorax and all that, um, and with some other complications. Ano nangyari, pinag-pray namin yun, uh, yung mga pamilya niya, uuwi na, uuwi na yung mga anak niya, Uuwi na yung mga anak niya, galing abroad, kasi they were gonna pull the plug on him na eh. Tatanggalin na yung ano, kasi nga, sinabi na ng doktor na wala na. Huwag na kayong ano, it's, it, mag-decide na kayo, kasi talagang hindi na siya, wala na. Hanggang doon na lang, yung mag, uh, bubuhay sa kanya is yung makina na lang. So, pino, umuwi yung mga kapatid niya, uh, mga anak niya from the, yung isa stage, yung isa Canada, yung isa Saudi, you know, para magpaalam. 
So ang ginawa namin, so ang ginawa ko, the Holy Spirit has already impressed upon me na sinabi na naramdaman ko na, alam mo yung pakiramdam na alam mo yung you know that you know that you know that Jesus healed him. So ang ginawa ko, punta ako ron, pray namin, uh, doon mo may kita. Kasi kapag alam mo, may revelation ka, ano, ano talaga yung biniyara ng Panginoon, by that, when I left the room, lahat, pati pamilya niya, natatawa na nga lang nung sinasabi kong magaling na siya. Magaling na po siya. Tapos pati yung ibang family friend, pag ginako, magaling na siya. So parang ako pa yung engot, parang ako pa yung nahihibang na yata. Ano siya nasabi, magaling na siya. So the next day, dumating yung mga anak niya, and they were gonna pull the plug on him. Yes, tinanggal yung plug. Pero tinanggal yung plug kasi magaling na siya. That is what Jesus is. Yan si Jesus. Kapag binigay sa puso nyo that you have been healed, you are healed up to the extent na kaya mong paniwalaan yung healing na yan. Hanggang doon lang. Amen? And in verse 18, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. This is talking about Paul praying that the Christians will come to know the power that is in them. Now let me ask you this question. Do you know the power that is in you? Do you know that Jesus Christ is on the inside of you? The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same spirit that you have inside of you. Alam ba natin yun? It is why ngayon we get reminded, mapaalala sa atin, somehow our hearts be steered. Kasi pag hindi mo alam yung ang mga binayala niya, at lalo-lalo na hindi mo alam yung word, at lalo-lalo na hindi mo, <laughs> hindi mo alam kung, kung ano ba yung as-asam ba siya ngayon, Alam mo, makikita mo kagad kung paano ka mag-pray eh. Even the way people pray, even the way Christians pray. Sila, Lord, may mga prayer pa sila na, Lord, uh, please, please, Lord, uh, bisitahin mo kami ngayong gabi, tulungan, babaan nyo kami, may mga ganyan pang prayer eh. Doon mo lang makikita, tingnan mo, na, what happened to Hebrews 13.5 that I will never leave you nor forsake you? Kung sasabihin mo, babaan mo kami. Hindi eh, niyo na sinasabi pa na, please, don't take, tulungan nyo ako, Lord, uh, magkikita-kita kami ngayon, samahan nyo kami. Eh, di ba sabi nga, Diba? Where two of you are gathered, there I am in the midst of you. So asan yung mga yun? So doon mo makikita, eh, kapag hindi, you don't have the revelation, ang nangyari na lang sa'yo, sumabay ka na lang sa agos. Ang nangyari na lang sa'yo, sumabay ka na lang sa tradisyon, na kasanayan mo, narinig mo kayo ganito, ginaya mo na lang. Tapos wala ka naman self-seeking. Ganito ang mangyayari. We're gonna pray foolish prayers. Be with us tonight, Lord. Lord, be with us tonight. Anong nangyari, nangyari sa Matthew 18.20? Anong nangyari sa Matthew 28.20? Nawala? Natanggal sa Bible? Hindi ganun. Amen? So ganito yun. Verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places? Mga kapatid, din sa isa po natin. Paano ba natin nawawala ng visa nawawala ng kabuluhan, nawawala ng saysay ang pagkamatay ni Kristo sa Jesus, if you are right now, kung ang ginagawa mo, you are still living your life as if you are living before the cross and not after the cross. Pag ganyan ang ginagawa mo, you make the cross of Christ of none effect. You make His death void. Ganyan ang nangyayari, mga kapatid. Kaya ngayon kung nakikitin niya, takil laging tatanungin mo, bakit ko ba ginagawa ito? Ginagawa ko ba ito para may gawin si God sa akin? O ginagawa ko ito kasi may ginawa si God sa akin? Ano ko ano yun? Ginagawa ko to kasi na-bless muna ako. Kaya ako gina... Wa, wa, ba't ba kami nagtuturo dito? Kasi punong-puno kami ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Hindi kami namin ginagawa ito para mahalin kami ng Panginoon. Hindi namin ginagawa ito para bless kami ng Panginoon. Bless na kami. Punong-puno kami ng pagmamahal. This is why we do this. Byproduct ni Jesus ito. So you ask yourself this. Ito ba yung ginagawa natin? Ginagawa, nanonood ba tayo? Ako, hindi ako nakaparood na may tanoya. Baka may problema ako bukas. Ganun ka ba? Ano kung di ako nakatend ng church? Ano kung baka may parating na ano? Ano oh, ko ayoko masyado maging masaya ngayon kasi may kapalit? Ganun ka ba? You have to understand kung sino yung nasa loob mo. Kasi kung alam mo kung sino yung nasa loob mo, then it will empower you. It will give you the grace, the ability para lakaran lahat ng dapat mong lakaran. Na walang pag-aalimlangan. Na walang pagdududa. Kung magdududa ka, pagdudahan mo yung duda. Dahil yun ang kaduda-duda. Amen? So sabi nga ganun. But I, I'm almost done. To top this all out, ano ba yung requirement sa salvation? Before the cross and after the cross. Before the cross, ang salvation ito requirement. 
Matthew 19, 16 to 17. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Sabi ni Jesus, this is Jesus speaking ha, si Jesus ang kausap dito, ang nagsasalita rito. Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, listen to this. Si Jesus nagsabi nito ha, this was before the cross, para maliwanag sa atin. Kasi yung iba, huminto na dito eh. Nandito na sila na iwan. Sabi ni Jesus, if you want to receive eternal life, if you want to be saved, sabi ni ganun, keep the commandments. Si Jesus ang nagsasabi niya. Oh, kala ko ba, hindi keep the Si Jesus nagsasabi nito. Kaya nga kailangan talaga, we rightly divide the word of truth. Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, sisipin nyo, this was written after the cross, but talks about things before the cross. So, ito ngayon mismo, si Jesus ang nagsasalita rito. Sinabi niya noon, paano ka masasave? Keep the commandments. And then he goes on to say that, you know, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother, and so on. You know, siyami ni Jesus, obey the commandments. Si Jesus to, ah. But this is before the cross. Let's see the requirement after the cross. This is the requirement after the cross. Acts 16, 30 to 31. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Ito na, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then they go and answered, They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Before the cross, keep the commandments. After the cross, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, anong ginagawa mo? Are you living before the cross or after the cross? It is not what we do first. It's about what Jesus done first. Kaya natin ginagawa ito. And now, as Christmas is approaching, nakikita ko, you know, naalala ko dati, in example ko before, masakit kasi tingnan na, di ba, sa mga bata tayo, naalala ko ng mga bata ko, yung Christmas tree, Hinahanap ko kagano'ng regalo ko kung nasaan eh. Sinisipat ko na, oh, akin yun. Excited ako, bubuksan ko yun. ba? Alam mo, masakit ngayon. Gifts under the tree of Calvary still remains unopened up until now. Kasi isa lang yung kinuha mo. Pero marami pang bigay yun. Maraming binayaran ng Panginoon doon. Buksan natin. Gamitin natin. Lakaran natin. Only then that we are able to, to, re, to receive the abundant life the eternal life that Jesus has promised. Let's pray. Almighty Father in heaven, Panginoon, thank you so much for this wonderful night. Lord, whoever is listening to this right now, whoever is watching, Lord, I know and I believe that their hearts have been stirred by the Holy Spirit, that they, they are able to understand which are they living before the cross or after the cross. Lord, may they have the revelation, the knowledge of the truth of what you paid for on the cross, lahat ng binayaran niyo, Panginoon, na ito'y mamuhay sa kanila at dahan-dahan nilang maliwanagan at mabukas ang kanilang mga isip. If there are any strongholds right now, we are bringing it down in the truth of the word. Because Lord God, everything has been provided for. When you said it was finished, it was finished. Nandito na lang kami upang tanggapin and to have faith in you and to what you have done and not on what we can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you again on Wednesday. Same time, same place, same background, same Jesus, different face. God bless you.